Ladies and gentlemen, in this Red Game Telecom video, let's talk about Zen again, shall we? Seems like a pretty opportune time since the company have unveiled a plethora, a slew, a deluge. Yes, I know that's several words which mean all the same thing, but still, I'm trying to enforce how much information the company have actually released on the upcoming processor. And I've got to admit, it's pretty damn impressive. Now, I just want to stress one thing this is engineering samples so that we're seeing the performance of and while that's really important why that's really important rather is because once again we're not seeing the final clock speeds or necessarily the indicative final performance of the retail silicon but with that said the company have shown the processor actually live on stage handling a couple of things one of those is dsx and another one is the company benchmarking against Broadwell E and i7-6900K. Now, they freely admit that what they did is downclock the Broadwell E to the same clock speed as Zen down to 3GHz, and there is a reason behind that. It's quite simply, once again, they are with, well, engineering samples. So it would be unfair for them to run the Broadwell E at a different clock speed which is obviously mu running much higher because it's final retail silicon and then for them to be on engineering silicon which is not necessarily conducive of the final performance now whether intel and amd are going to be on level pegging on the final retail silicon and it's getting really lengthy for me to say final retail silicon but um whether they actually end up running at the same clock speeds it's unknown however hopefully AMD can manage to make up that golf and if they can they're onto a bit of a winner because if they are actually targeting Broadwell E for the desktop for the average consumer because obviously Broadwell E if you start factoring in the cost of the processors the motherboard and all of the other bits and bobs it starts to become a lot more expensive than if you were to go out and let's say buy a 6600k or a 6700k processor Dr. Lisa Su from AMD had one clear message, that they are absolutely hitting their performance targets. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised, and I'm putting words into their mouth here, but obviously, um, it, from my interpretation and from a lot of analysts, it seems that AMD are actually slightly above the 40% mark. Now, of course, this does come to an application for application by application basis. So as you can imagine, certain architectures will do slightly better in certain benchmarks, and this is whether they're multi-core in nature or more single-threaded in nature. It's just how it is. Um, this is the same thing as even when the Athlons were taking on the Pentium 3s back in the day or the Pentium 4s were taking on the Athlon um, 64s. It's, it's just how certain... Um, applications deal with certain um, certain CPU architectures. Mark Papermaster went to the stage and actually said that AMD are back. They are hitting all of their goals and that basically they're sending a message. And this message isn't necessarily for Intel. This message is for us. This message is for reviewers. This message is for you as a gamer. This message is for you as a creator, whether you're creating excellent you know, 3D animation or um, sculptures in Maya or ZBrush or what have you, or you're creating 4K video in Adobe Premiere or equivalent. It's to say that, hey, they are going to be presenting an alternative. Now, I don't like to take sides with a company as much as possible, simply because I like to be straight down the middle. I like to count uh, myself as neutral as possible. It's very difficult to be 100% neutral, but I'm actually really loving this news. And it's not because I hate Intel. My current rig, I've got an Intel rig and an AMD rig, and I've actually got a couple of AMD rigs and a couple of Intel rigs, actually, to be fair. And I have switched between the generations based upon the performance and money in my wallet quite simple but i don't want any situation on earth where intel or nvidia or one company are the only game in town because as i keep saying in every video i produce it's not good for us as customers i'll definitely be producing a more in-depth video over the next couple of days once more information emerges at the moment the events are still kind of going on through gamescon and all of that so it's not a hundred percent at the moment so i'll have to wait 
um, when AMD put more slides up. However, what we can tell you is the information looks pretty accurate. The whole process has been designed from the ground up with low power, high performance in mind. And obviously, they we know about some things the company were doing from the beginning. They were f focusing on SMT, which is simultaneous multi-threading. For those of you who are uninitiated with that, think of Intel's hyper-threading. It basically allows one core, one processor core, to handle and execute two threads. So you have essentially two logical cores from one physical. Um, and basically they've re-engineered a lot of the scheduling units um, so you've got much better prediction in what's going to happen much lower latency in terms of the cache uh, we've already discussed at length just yesterday actually about the level 3 cache redesign so you've got 8 megabytes of level 3 cache per 4 cores the processors work as kind of like modules and this is one thing that AMD have been enforcing a lot whether it's the Polaris architecture or their new range of CPUs which are obviously for the desktop um, aimed at AM4 but basically speaking they want you to be able to, or well, they want to be able to slot them together. Now, the desktop at the moment is four core. I'm hearing rumors of six core all the way up to eight. And that would be the high end one. That would be Summit Ridge. But you will actually be able to see very ridiculous levels of processor numbers when you start dealing with Nepal's. Now, Nepal's is a server based processor, it's a SOC, and that is going to feature 64 threads thanks to 32 cores I imagine the majority of you who are probably listening or watching this are not too interested in that because a you don't have the cache and b even if you did have the cache how many applications realistically are you going to run which are going to even be able to take full advantage of 16 threads let alone the ridiculousness that is 64 threads I mean I guess if you do a lot of virtual machine work then potentially but you'd need a fuck ton of RAM which is probably slightly outside the remit of most usage scenarios that you might have however um, the very fact of the matter is AMD have done a really good thing here and I'm extremely excited as you can probably tell from my demeanor um, and as I said, I will be doing a full in-depth analysis of this over the next couple of days. Um, I've actually finished the GTX 1070 review. I know, that's pretty freaking surprising, right? Uh, I'm going to be watching it one more time today. The reason I'm taking a bit longer... Well, I had a couple of fuck-ups, to be honest. The one problem I had was I had a hard drive failure. Then I had a Windows install failure. <laughs> and then recently a power supply has exploded. Um, so basically, it's just been like, Really? But these things happen, it's just part and parcel. Fortunately, I've not lost any data, which is always the positive thing, from thanks to uh, backups and uh, being fairly good at splitting up data across multiple hard drives. And also, to be honest, I wanted to take a lot longer with this review, not because of previous reviews have been inaccurate, but mostly because I wanted to do a lot more when it came to... Um, well, I guess the best way of putting it would be I wanted to visually change how I displayed data. So I'm pretty happy with it. So I'm going to be going over it one more time today. Um, and then that should be up tomorrow. But after that, I've got a fairly clear run apart from I've been sent a few more pieces of hardware which I need to get through. But I do want to go through Zen um, once the company do put up more technical slides and more information over the next couple of days or so. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty damn excited. I don't know about you guys, but I'm I'm actually pretty confident. Obviously, I don't want to count my chickens before they're hatched. Ultimately, it really comes down to the uh, performance of the processor. Once we get it into our rigs, what AMD managed to price the damn thing at, what the motherboard is as well. For example, the... Um, high-end Zen, the 8-core, 16-thread version, could cost, and I'm just throwing out a number here, £200. However, the motherboards could be like £200 as well. So you could be looking at a lot of pricing, or they could be priced fairly competitively. So, for example, similar pricing to the current Skylight lineup, which would be absolutely fantastic. And it would mean that folks who are coming from an older processor, like... Um, let's say Haswell or anything below that, 
DDR3 would obviously need to upgrade to DDR4, but thankfully DDR4 memory prices are quite low at the moment. And even if you have a DDR4 based rig, like for example a 5820K or you've got a 6600K possibly, and you're starting to get into usage scenarios where you need those additional threads, Zen could be quite a compelling argument, especially if perhaps you're building a secondary rig and a lot of power users do have a couple of rigs especially if they're doing a lot of rendering work because it's handy to be able to say send off um, a project to another system for it to render in the background so you can continue to work on your main system or you know you might just want to be doing some gaming don't you know but with all that said I'm going to get going hopefully you've enjoyed the video I'll see you around soon yeah, hopefully anyway do the likey subscribe your thing the share your thing it would be much appreciated but for now, take care of yourselves.